this is Mike from Fearshop.com. Make sure you like this video and leave your comments. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to set up notifications so you know when the next video drops. Let's get into it. Today we are ranking the Friday the 13th films from best to worst. You have no idea how hard this list was for me to narrow it down. I even went through quickly and refused to change my initial list because I could look at this list every day and it would be different. If you have not figured it out by now, I love Friday the 13th films. I've seen them all a ton of times. Even my worst ranked Friday the 13th film is a film that I've seen a million times. Please note that I will end up giving some spoilers, but I will try to avoid to keep them small. For the record, if you have not seen every film in the series, you should check them out right now. I'll wait. Seriously though, without further ado, let's get into it. Number 12 is Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan from 1989, directed by Rob Hedden. To be honest, I'd love to defend this movie as not being the worst in the franchise, but it's hard to do so. What I will say is that I actually do like Jason Takes Manhattan. The concept is interesting, but does not get fleshed out well enough. While this film was released at the tail end of the decade, it could be the most 80s Friday the 13th film of all time. The characters were kind of lame. People love the boxing kill, but I never quite liked that one. Most of the kills are lame, perhaps except for the guitar kill. At the end of the day, the film is the poorest performing film in the franchise. The ending is just silly as well. First off, toxic waste, the kills on touch running through the sewers in the same place where people were working. And seriously, toxic waste turns Jason into a boy? It's hard to believe that. After the release of Manhattan, writer-director Robert Hedden was approached to direct the next Nightmare on Elm Street film, which he actually turned down. Number 11, Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday, 1993, directed by Adam Marcus. Most people absolutely loathe the Final Friday, but I adore this film for the same reasons that people hate it. The story is a little different, but actually works. The Friday the 13th franchise is not afraid to introduce different storylines like Jason in Manhattan, Jason in space, Jason against a girl with telekinetic powers, but Jason goes to hell. I loved how Jason was not limited to being in his body and the true Jason is able to go in and out of bodies to survive, although his most powerful body is his own and it can be reborn into it by another voice. Okay, perhaps this is all a bit of a reach, but it works. The beginning of the film let you know this will be a little different. Jason's literally blown up. Spoiler alert, this is not the final Friday. Number 10, Friday 13th, A New Beginning, 1985, directed by Danny Steinman. I love A New Beginning, but it does bum me out a bit. The big reveal is that Jason's not Jason. We also get another tease of Tommy becoming Jason at the end, which never gets fleshed out in part six. There are great kills in this one. The biker's kill is funny. Tina's kill shows us what great assets she brings to the film, but it's also a brutal kill. Uh, Tina's played by Debbie Sue Voorhees, who's a former Playmate Playmate and had the right name for the role, I guess. Yes, Voorhees is her actual last name. The leather strap is another great one. The fact that they went so far off the beaten path on this film to try to make it more than it needed to be does not make much sense. Miguel A. Nunez Jr. as Demon Winter is awesome. Shavar Ross as Reggie Winter could even be better. Number 9, Friday 13th from 1980, directed by Sean S. Cunningham and written by Victor Miller. It's hard to believe that the original Friday 13th film is so low on my list because, yeah, it is that good. Betsy Palmer channeling Jason's voice is frightening. There are some good kills in here. If you have not checked out my deep dive video for this film, you definitely should. We get into the inner workings of the film and you get to learn a lot about a film that you may not have known otherwise. Kevin Bacon's kill is awesome. Overall, this film is still amazing. Number 8, Freddy vs. Jason from 2003, directed by Ronnie Yu. 15 years in the making, Freddy vs. Jason was released in the United States on August 15, 2003. It grossed over $116 million worldwide the highest grossing film in the Friday the 13th series and the second highest grossing film in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. The film is Robert England's final cinematic appearance as Freddy Krueger. The battle between the two is awesome. The entire cornfield rave is insanity as Jason goes to town. The bed kill in the early parts of the film is brutal. Let's face it, 
Having Monica Kina and Catherine Isabel, never hurt anyone either. Number seven, Jason X from 2002, directed by James Isaac. Leprechaun went to space, Pinhead went to space, Friday the 13th was right there as well. This film should have been horrible, but think about it. Space in the futuristic setting means that Jason has more options now for his brutal kills, and he took advantage of them. We're introduced to Jason's futuristic counterpart, Uber Jason. Jason's cryogenically frozen after a bit of a fight and wakes up in 2455. Earth has become too polluted to supply life, and humans have moved to a new planet, Earth 2. One of the best kills was Jason freezing Adrian's face in liquid nitrogen before smashing her head to pieces on a counter. KM-14 gets an upgrade and destroys Jason, but that was way too easy and Jason ultimately ends up getting an upgrade himself. We move on in the film and the crew creates a holographic simulation of Crystal Lake to distract Jason. That adds some more comic relief to the film. Overall, the film is far from perfect, but still works so well. Number 6, Friday the 13th from 2009, directed by Marcus Nisbell. The most recent film on this list is a reboot of the Friday the 13th series, with Jason being alive and well as the killer. This film surprisingly worked out well. The Friday the 13th formula is not exactly a hard one to replicate. Get a bunch of kids with different backgrounds, add a jerk, add some comedic characters, add hot women, blend it all together with great kills, and the fans eat it up. The spell already proved success with this remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. With this reboot, we see a brutal Jason and we learn about perfect nipple placement. People get bent out of shape about Jason taking a hostage, but I will never understand how people let that bother them as much. Number 5, Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood from 1988, directed by John Carl Buechler. I'm a sucker for The New Blood. First off, Jason looks amazing. You see his bones, his outfit is what you would expect from everything he has been through through the years. Kane Hodder's introduced as Jason and he adds so much to the character. His heavy breathing and mannerisms add a different element to Jason. He also has a sleeping bag kill. As odd as it sounds, this is not the only sleeping bag kill in the series. What makes this film a little more different is that Jason's final girl is Tina, played by Laura Park Lincoln. She has telekinetic powers and Jason has never faced anything like that before. Back in 1988, they were already talking about a crossover film with Jason and Freddy. Paramount Pictures proposed a crossover idea to New Line Cinema, the rival company who held the rights to the Elm Street films with Paramount controlling domestic distribution and New Line controlling international distribution. The idea was abandoned after the two companies failed to come to an agreement, with the concept only coming to fruition after New Line purchased the rights to the Friday the 13th franchise, releasing Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. Number 4, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives, from 1986, directed by Tom McLaughlin. Jason officially gets resurrected from the dead in this one, so people start calling him a zombie. Kind of silly if you ask me. Tommy's back again. There's a little more comic relief in this one. The resurrection intro is amazing. Uh, there's only one of the two Friday the 13th films that actually feature kids at Camp Crystal Lake, believe it or not. The ending with the fire in the lake makes for some awesome visuals. You get some cool music with Alice Cooper. Just a great film overall. Number three, Friday the 13th, part three, 1982 directed by Steve Miner. Funny how Steve Miner, along with Friday the 13th director, Sean S. Cunningham, was completely against the idea of bringing Jason back as the killer in part two, but Miner would go on to direct parts two and three. Sure, part three was hokey with the 3D stuff when you look at it today, but back then, that was crazy technology. Recently, we went through a resurgence of 3D films, but that was not the first time. In the early 80s, 3D was huge, and Friday the 13th took their turn with it as well. Watching the film in 2D makes it look silly, but part three is a great film. Jason finds his hockey mask and really brings back some of the violence that part two was missing. The harpoon kill was amazing, among some other ones as well. The final battle was absolutely brutal. Number two is Friday the 13th part two from 1981, directed by Steve Miner. I've never looked at a potato sack the same again. Jason started the film by cleaning up where his mother left off in the original film. The franchise was off and running with Jason being around for good. Of course, you have the completely politically incorrect wheelchair kill. The handstand kill is brutal. The end of the film comes back full circle with Jason's love for his mother. The violence is toned down from the original. 
because so many folks were upset with how violent the original ended up being for its time and rating. Amy Steele's Ginny is one of the best final girls ever. By the way, if you've not seen Twitch at a Death Nerve, you should check it out. You may be surprised to see that Friday the 13th Part 2 has some eerily reminiscent scenes to that classic film. And number one is Friday the 13th, the final chapter from 1984, directed by Joseph Zito. Honestly, I can go back and forth with part two and the final chapter, but the reality is the final chapter had some of the best kills in the franchise, as well as some of the best characters. You have Crispin Glover as a dorky Jimmy, Lawrence Magnuson as one of the bigger jerks in the franchise, Teddy, the twins, and of course, Corey Feldman introducing Tommy Jarvis, who plays a huge role in the next three films. The corkscrew kill is awesome, the shower kill is brutal, the final kills against Jason are brutal. Jason's head sliding down the machete is awesome. The ending has a little trick of Tommy possibly taking over the mantle of Jason, but that gets abandoned in the next films. Spoiler alert, this is not the final chapter. So that wraps this one up. I want to hear from you. Post your thoughts on this video and let me know how this franchise impacted your love for horror. That's it for this episode. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you subscribe. But most of all, make sure you keep it horror. Ha, 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 ha.